systems. The Mona Canyon, where the 1918 earthquake occurred, is another zone with many faults. To the northwest, the Septentrional Fault extends from the Mona Passage into the Dominican Republic. Throughout the Mona Passage, there are many fault segments of different length. The subduction zone at the Muertos Trench, south of Puerto Rico, extends from south of the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. In the Virgin Islands depression between St. Croix and St. Thomas, there is a series of faults. From Fajardo to the northeast of the Virgin Islands is the Sombrero Seismic Zone, a very seismically active area. On average, between one and three quakes are recorded daily in the Puerto Rico region, although most of these are not felt. Since Spanish colonial times, more than 610 earthquakes have been reported as felt. Ten of these have caused injuries, death, and property damage. Among these, the events of 1867, 1918, and 1946 produced tsunamis. As an island, all of Puerto Rico's shores are exposed to tsunamis. But the areas of greatest risk are Aguada, Aguadilla, and Mayagüez, because of all the urban development along the coastline. The 1918 tsunami created a gigantic wave that affected the coastline of Aguada, Aguadilla, Rincón, and Mayagüez. Because of that history, we have identified the most populated areas. Signs have been installed throughout the most populated and traveled areas, advising people to move away from the shore as soon as they feel a strong earthquake. Here, personnel from the State Emergency Management Agency are developing a prevention system that includes drills, signs in dangerous areas, education, and an evacuation plan for schools in coastal areas. The San Carlos Private School is located just across the street from the Aguadilla Beach. It's one of the buildings most exposed to tsunami. A year ago, we began an education program for both students and teachers. They were trained in first aid, drills were performed, and signs were posted so that everyone would know what to do in case of a tsunami. The best warnings of an approaching tsunami comes from nature itself. Some of the natural signs could be an earthquake so strong that one can barely remain standing, seawater receding abruptly, a sudden rise in sea level, a powerful sound coming from the open ocean. Besides these natural warnings, it is possible to establish tsunami warning systems. For the Pacific region, where tsunamis attack most frequently, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Hawaii and the West Coast Alaska Tsunami Warning Center have been established. These centers use data obtained from a worldwide network of seismic stations, pressure sensors, and sea level gauges to issue washes and warnings. In Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico Seismic Network of the Department of Geology of the University of Puerto Rico in Mayagüez is the institution responsible for the detection, analysis, location, and release of seismic information. It uses data from a series of seismic stations distributed throughout Puerto Rico, including the Mona, the Seixeo, Caja de Muertos, Vieques and Culebra Islands, as well as the Virgin Islands and the Dominican Republic. Each of these stations sends a signal either directly or via repeaters to the Seismic Network office in Mayagüez. Once here, as we watch the data being recorded, we get an idea of each earthquake's magnitude. If we perceive that the registered amplitude of movement is high, then we can conclude it is a large event, possibly an event capable of generating a tsunami. The Puerto Rico Seismic Network, in coordination with the State Emergency and Disaster Management Agency and the National Weather Service, have established a protocol for responding to a possible tsunami and broadcasting bulletins for washes and warnings. A tsunami warning will be released if a tsunami was or may have been generated. One or more of the following situations could apply. The seismic network registers an earthquake within the Puerto Rico region, which magnitude is at least 6.5.
According to the seismographs, the epicenter of an earthquake with at least a magnitude 6.5 is located on the ocean near Puerto Rico. The earthquake's intensity, according to the modified Mercalli scale, is 7 or more in any point in Puerto Rico. During an earthquake this strong, everyone will feel the event and it will be difficult to remain standing. Even while driving, one may feel the earthquake. Windows, dishes, glass objects and furniture may break. Objects may fall from shelves. Low-quality constructions will likely be damaged. Soil may show small collapses or bumps. Pools and ponds may show moving waves. If a tsunami was generated, a tsunami watch will be issued immediately. On the contrary, if there is confirmation that no tsunami has been produced or that its effects are no longer registered, the watch or warning will be cancelled when it is safe to return to evacuated areas. It is important to remember that in 1918 and 1867, the tsunami began to hit some areas during or within minutes of the strong ground shaking. This kind of situation would leave little time to issue a warning. That's why it is important that the population knows how to identify the impending signs of a tsunami, such as an earthquake, receding water and strange noises coming from the ocean, and evacuate immediately. For a landslide-generated tsunami not associated with a strong earthquake, there is no warning system whatsoever. In this case, it is critical to depend on a population capable of recognizing and acting upon significant changes in ocean behavior. In the case of a volcanic eruption with tsunamigenic potential, a watch or warning will be issued only if those in charge of monitoring notify the pertinent authorities in Puerto Rico. Given the real threat posed to Puerto Rico by such an event, it is recommended that the population educate and prepare themselves for a possible tsunami. It is important to point out that when an earthquake or tsunami occurs, a crisis situation arises. It is important that the plan be well articulated in your home, family or organization level. This way people will know what to do in case of an earthquake and the possibility of a tsunami. You will know whether to go to a fifth floor, climb upon your roof or go to another place. This has to be well planned because upon arrival of the event there will be crisis, problems will arise and we must have all answers before taking action. There are some security measures that should be taken now and during a tsunami emergency. If you live or work in a low-lying coastal zone, you must have a tsunami response plan. If you live or work in an area prone to damages by a tsunami, you should have an emergency backpack ready to carry to a shelter. Identify the places safe for shelter in case of a tsunami. Perform evacuation drills. Construction of hospitals, schools, and other critical facilities near the coast must be avoided. Always be on alert for an emergency. Not all earthquakes cause tsunamis, but some do. During an earthquake, the most important thing is to protect your life and the people around you. Seek the best place to protect yourself. If the earthquake is so strong that it makes standing difficult, you see unusual behavior of ocean waters, or a tsunami warning message is released, you must abandon the area closest to the coast immediately. In buildings with several stories, one may evacuate horizontally or vertically up in a building. The arrival of a tsunami is sometimes preceded by a noticeable increase or decrease of the sea level. This is a natural warning for a tsunami and must be taken into account immediately. Don't be deceived by small tsunami waves. They can be small in one area along the coast and be extremely large nearby. A tsunami consists of more than a single wave. Stay away from hazardous areas until the competent authorities declare an end to the watch or warning. Like hurricanes, all tsunamis are potentially destructive, even if they don't affect all coastal areas. 
never approach the beach to look at a tsunami. If you are so close that you can see the waves, then it might be too late to evacuate.